here with Mike for his weekly writing video tip. Think of common mistakes in creating a compelling narrative voice. Uh, I have always said that every would-be writer has a million words of bullshit clogging up his system. And you have to get that out as soon as possible to get to the good stuff. But mostly this is a matter of, of ear. What sounds good? What sounds direct? What's good storytelling? So these are things you should not do. First of all, avoid the passive tense, if at all possible. Or to put it another way, the passive tense is to be avoided. I'll give you an example. They were met by security who escorted them to command bunkers. This is a common mistake. No, they were not met by security. Security met them. Back here, my dear, I may have to get a new director. <laughs> I don't know if you can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> she comes cheap. <laughs> Two, use contractions. Do not say, do not spell out every verb like you're talking to a moron. Example is, I did not know. No, I didn't know. You would not go there. No, you'd not go there. Use contractions. Three, adjectives are not your friend. Instead of piling on the adjectives, use the right verb for the job. Uh, for instance, he wildly grasped the dog. No, just say he grasped the dog the grass of the dog that was thrashing around, uh, especially with verbs. Beware of those adverbs, beware of those adjectives. Describe something using concrete details. The cake was yellow with a thick frosting. The cake was not wildly yellow with an outrageously thick frosting. It was simply yellow with a thick frosting. Four, do not use colons or semicolons. They have no place in a work of fiction. Uh, they may have place in a scientific journal, but not in a work of fiction, unless you're quoting a scientific journal. Use regular punctuation, periods, commas, quote marks. Six, beware of gerunds. This is very important. You don't say, Bob was sitting in a chair. You say, Bob sat in a chair. May I ask you a question? You may. So I use colons and semicolons. What is the reason for not using those? Uh, they're not regular punctuation and, and uh, uh, what do you think they mean? I mean, why do you put that in there? What do you think the colon or the semicolon in indicates? Well, for me, it's like I have a series of things after it. That's kind of like a, so it's almost like a sentence ending and then I have a series of things afterwards. Either use a comma or end the sentence and start a new one. Okay, thank you. Uh, avoid qualifiers that seek to order events in time, like, but, then, next, they're all unnecessary. If the sentence says what the person does and it follows the previous sentence, the timeline is laid out. People love to use but because they think it creates suspense, but it rarely does. It's just a, a frill word. It's a throwaway word. The, pre the right place to use but is when you're quoting people because they use it a lot. You see, but I already did that. That's fine because that's the way people talk. But that's not the way the narrator should talk. The narrator says, John ate his lunch, but next he got up from the table. No, all you have to say, John ate his lunch and he got up from the table because one sequence, one event follows the other and, and the, the writer, the reader orders that in his mind. He knows what's happening in real time. And uh, finally, there's nothing wrong with the word said. When you're quoting something or somebody, 90% uh, uh, of the time you wanna use the word said, and you don't wanna put it before the person who's speaking. Like, hey, said Bob. It just sounds awkward. It should be, hey, Bob said. Uh, a lot of people will do anything to avoid using the word said. 
say Bob chuckled, uh, Bob retorted, Bob quizzed. Well, if it's quizzed, there'll be a question mark at the end of the quote. Said is your friend. Now, uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands of books on writing, and many of them are very good, but there's only one essential book, and that's Elements of Style by Strunk and White. It's, uh, it's over 70 years old, and it still rings true, and it only takes about an hour to read, and it's very witty. Elements of Style by Strunk and White. Yeah, that's, that book has been around for a long time, hasn't it? Mm hmm But it's still the what, standard for writing. All right. Any other wisdom, words of wisdom for us on this Wednesday? Don't lift. Don't what? Lift. Lift? Don't lift. <laughs> Don't lift? Lift. Lift? Don't lift. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, do, I, do we have any words of wisdom from Freddie or Mac or Bob? Bob. Freddie says, always take a hat. No, Freddie says you always need to give him a treat and then take him to the dog park. That's what he says. All right. Well, we so far have been pretty good about being on track with our Wednesday morning writing tips. So hopefully you're enjoying those. Any other new exciting projects in the works? You know, folks, I send out a, uh, a bi-weekly newsletter and we're about to send one out tomorrow. If you want to be on the newsletter, send me your email. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Bloody Red Baron. I'm on Facebook as Michael A. Barron and the comics and novels of Mike Barron. I'm on Substack, mikebarron.substack.com. Right. Uh, and I have a website, bloodyredbaron.com. And a Patreon account. And a Patreon account. Okay. And, and if you sign up for the Patreon account, I'll send you something. Something good. Uh, great. Well, uh, the e-newsletter the e goes out once a month on the, uh, what are we looking at? Oh, well, it's just one second here. So the e-newsletter goes out once a month on the first Thursday of the month. Otherwise, Mike's gonna have to fire his MailChimp person, which is me, but no, so it goes out once a month. All right, thanks so much. We'll say bye. We'll take one last scroll of the dogs. It's a nice, drizzly, overcast morning here in Colorado. Thanks so much. <laughs>